So I've been doing a lot of thinking. The reason I'm building this hill climb car is because I applied for Pikes Peak this year and I didn't get in. The reason being, my car is not suitable for pavement, which is understandable. It's still a dirt car. In fact, it won in 2000 in its class. So I was in the process of turbocharging the thing for Pikes Peak under the impression I was maybe going to get in. but. Uh, obviously that didn't happen, so we're going to be running an open wheel class with CHCA this year with a turbocharged 3.2 liter SHO, which it'll be fun. I'm going to try to be a little conservative with it. It definitely uh, screams when I drive it, so I'm, I'm going to try to be a little conservative with it because I don't want to wreck it, one, and two, I don't want to blow it up and not run the full season. So, with that said, that's the reason I'm building this car. What, for one, because I want to get into the into Pikes Peak, and for two, I think it's a fun project. So let's get into it. I decided instead of using the wooden buck, which is great for metal panels and that kind of thing, I decided we're going to mill it out of foam because I found uh, APS foam boards fairly cheap. Uh, they're like 30 bucks a piece for a 2 inch thick uh, board. So my cam strategy is as follows. I have a 5x10 table, but these sheets are 4x8. So I got to make everything fit be between these constraints. So I split up my solid model so each layer would fit in a 4x8 sheet. And then from there, my tool only has a 1 inch depth of cut. So I offset surfaces 1 inch 4 times into a depth of 4. And I have a scallop tool path running on each one of those. So, and then it just retracts to the full clearance height. So you can see I went to Home Depot, bought a lot of panels, um, there's my old buck, and there's me machining part of the new one. So my plan is with this, there's a finished piece, uh, I'm going to glue them all together and then kind of give them a, a quick sanding and then coat them with something like Styrocoat or something similar, I think that's what it's called. But anyways, one thing I found very uh, helpful on my router slash plasma table is dust collection. Um, that was a big challenge because it's rack and pinion drive as you can see here and everything just kind of gets shoved into the gear and it can skip steps and that kind of thing. So it was very helpful to have dust collection on the machine and also to keep it oiled and clean. So that's a big, big part of this because we're removing a lot of material with these cuts. So that was helpful. And then uh, I got some parts in the mail for the uh, suspension, the uprights, as well as the bell cranks for the shocks. So fun fact, I changed my mind on the whole engine thing. Um, I had a... 5.3 and a dual clutch from a like 08 M3 and I think that's what we're going to put in it because it fits really nice. Um, I'll show you show you it here in a little bit but I think that's going to work really well and it'll give it a lot of power. The only thing is we got to stay under that 2500 pound range to fit the rule book. So that's all I'm worried about. So I want to give a shout out to YouTube channels Inspire CNC and Perpetual Sabbatical. These foam methods came directly from both of these channels and are a pretty advanced and cool way to build really large structures with foam. And yeah, I just wanted to give them a quick shout out because this is pretty much their method and I've been really happy with it so far.